Ancient Chinese mortar usually consisted of inorganic components of clay, soil, called tabia, or loess, hydrated slaked lime, and sand, and water or organic gelled admixtures like egg white, tongue oil, and animal blood. The water line mortar could bear on average 29.5 kilograms. It was the poorest performing mortar. Its consistency was aerated and grainy, crumbling easily in the hand and breaking cleanly away from the pavers when it buckled. It was the most efficient in terms of resource management, as water is readily available and only 26% of water to lime and sand was required. The egg white lime mortar could bear on average 85.15 kilograms, making it the least effective organic gelled mortar, on average only holding three times the weight of the water admixture. But the results varied wildly with the thickness of the mortar, showing a correlation between the thicker undried mortars and their poor performance. The egg mortar was very hard when dry, unable to be crumbled in the hand with no aeration between the grains, 
and it did not break cleanly from the pavers, suggesting it had good adhesive qualities. Although egg whites are readily available and need little to no preparation, the mortar required 33% egg, or around 10 egg whites to 1.5 litres of sand and lime, making it the highest amount of organic gelled and mixture required to create the mortar. This correlates with Feng et al.'s 2014 identification tests. When dried properly, I believe the egg white would most likely have been used as a load-bearing mortar for terrestrial structures whose aesthetic finish wasn't important. The Tung Oil Lime Mortar could bear on average 149.6 kilograms, making it the strongest adhesive of the four examined. It was on average five times stronger than the water admixture. There also seems to be a correlation between the thickness of the mortar join and its performance, with the thinner mortars achieving the highest load limits. The tongue oil had a glossy smooth finish with no aeration. It was very hard when dry and the grains settled very tightly together in the hardened lacquer-like finish. However, it was the least economical, requiring 28% tongue oil to lime and sand, where time investment in the preparation of oil requires a pressing of many tongue seeds, which is labour-intensive and expensive. This correlates with Feng et al. 2014 in that its tight and lacquer-like microstructure had no pores and was adhesively strong enough to hold a large amount of weight, making it perfect for tombs and marine environments. The pig's blood lime mortar could bear on average 113.3 kilograms and was on average four times stronger than the water admixture. The outer layer of the mortar had a very fine and smooth surface while the inside was slightly aerated. While it couldn't be crumbled in the hands, it was very powdery. Only 23% of blood to lime and sand was required, making good use of animal blood that might have otherwise gone to waste. This correlates with Feng et al.'s 2015 findings that its smooth and powdered surface was perfect for the base layers of frescoes, renderings, or for adornment purposes rather than weight-bearing structures. In conclusion, Overall, these findings correlate with the findings of Yang et al. 2009, 2010, 2016 and Feng et al. 2014 in that the organic gelled admixtures that were applied to ancient Chinese mortars are significantly stronger and tougher than inorganic admixtures such as water, highlighting why Chinese builders decided to use them during construction. This also makes them archaeologically more durable and therefore more identifiable in the archaeological record and shows how variances in their morphological structure and mechanical performance dictate their use for specific construction purposes and environments. It also makes them an appropriate choice for restoration and conservation work as they are physically and chemically compatible to the original mortars without being too strong that they will threaten the structure of the buildings but stronger than traditional lime mortars.